We're going to be talking about the players that was released by the Detroit Lions as they get down to 85-man roster, what it means for the team as a whole. We're going to talk about the observations from training camp, what the offense and what the defense is going to be doing, and special teams, of course. Hey, you got to do the three parts as well. And we're going to talk about what to kind of look forward to for the Lions versus the Steelers. On Saturday, the Lions face the Steelers, and I got a question for you. Do you believe that the first-string offense, Jared Goff, can do a scoring touchdown drive when he is in? Let me know in the comment section why for yes and for no. Let's jump right into the cuts right now. And the Detroit Lions cut Charlie T, the tight end. Now, he got injured because he was in that crazy car accident that took place with him and a former Lions player, so he is not going to be available. Evan Baum as well got injured, placed him on the IR, so that opens up that spot to get reduced to the 85. The Lions last week waived Michael Warren running back earlier in the week, so that was part of the quote-unquote 90 to 85. Michael Bennett, the defensive tackle, was also waived by the Detroit Lions. Chad Hansen, wide receiver, was waived with an injury settlement. And Sean Deion Hamilton, kind of a little bit of shock here, was placed on IR. So he was a player that was kind of standing out. So that kind of sucks for him for sure as he was looking to be kind of doing well in training camp. And you always want to see that. So so there you go, folks. The Lions are 85 players with those moves. And now we get to see what the rest of the roster does trying to get to 53. Also in the news is Carrion Johnson was waived by the Philadelphia Eagles. The former Detroit Lion kept having issues with the knee. They went and waived him injury as well the knee always doing the issues for this guy and it's not looking good for the future of him and his future NFL career comment on the video are you worried about DeAndre Swift's injury why for yes and for no it's very simple let me know and let's start the conversation flowing well, let's get into injuries really quick and update you all on that. Quarterback Tim Boyle did not practice. Obviously, he got a beat up fairly big there versus the Buffalo Bills. Chad Henson did not practice. Charlie T, he was actually way slash injured. If you've seen that crazy car accident that they're talking about, TJ Hawkinson injured last week. It's not serious. Hopefully, he can get back in the field. Maybe we can see him on Saturday. Evan was placed on IR. Terrell Crosby still dealing with that hamstring injury. Nick Williams on the COVID list should be coming off here fairly soon, maybe in a week or so. John Penasini undisclosed. Miles Brown undisclosed. Deshaun Hand undisclosed, but it's not considered serious. And that's always a guy we got to pay attention to because of last year when it comes to injury. Sean Deanne Hamilton undisclosed. Corn Elder injured on day nine of training camp. So hopefully these guys can get back in, in the game and get ready because, hey, season's starting here fairly soon. But thankfully, it's nothing serious for all of these gents. Let's talk about special teams really quick because we do have a battle raging on between Zane Gonzalez, the new acquired kicker from Arizona Cardinals. And first off, he kind of started a little bit shaky with a 45-yard miss. He got better as practice went along quite clean. Special team session of the day. Randy Bullock hit from approximately 33, 48, and 53. Gonzalez from 48 and 53. He did attempt a 53-yarder twice, but because one of the kicks got blocked. So, hey, right now they're battling, doing their thing. I kind of hope and still, my personal opinion when it comes to the special teams battle, is that our kicker is currently not on the roster. It does look like Bollock right now is leading the way, but I'm just not 100% convinced that he is the guy for us for the long term. We've seen it in many, many years. The Detroit Lions lose a game to a field goal, and that's what we don't want to see because those are the worst type of losses when something easy, all they got to do is kick that field goal to win a game, and it doesn't work out. But those guys are still battling. Nothing really to report on for the punt return and kick return in this session. We're just going to have to see as the Lions face the Steelers. But in my personal opinion, it looks like Khalif Raymond is getting a little bit more for that. And as what he can bring on wide receiver as well, it makes a lot of sense. On a positive note here, Lions second round draft pick defensive tackle Levi Anwuzarika has returned to practice. He's been dealing with a back issue throughout all of training camp. Something that he was dealing with in college. So hopefully he can stay healthy because it's important to get this man on the field. He needs to really get those reps as being a young guy. 
Ali McNeil is another rookie who's gotten those reps, and you can see considerably how much better he's got. So we need Levi to do the same. When it comes to Lions secondary, Amane Wari got beat up on a route by Quintez Cephas. These guys were battling it out. Yes, Cephas has returned. It looks like a little bit when it comes to practice. That's good because we need him to get on the field. Amani Awarie doing everything he can to sustain what he has done so far in training camp to be solidified as that number two. Jeffrey Okuda got beat by Brashard Perryman. That is interesting there because when you think of Jeffrey Okuda, he's had a very solid camp, and Brashard Perryman has a shaky camp, but it looks like there's a little bit of mix-up here from the Lions secondary. However, as the four-minute drill was taking place, interesting when it comes to the other players in the secondary. When you think of football, you think about hanging with friends, but you can always bet us and go ahead and bet on the game. It's simple. Go to chassboards.com slash lionsbet. Enter in promo code LIONS125. You get a 125% deposit bonus. What does that mean? You put in 100 bucks and you have 125 to spend. Now, you can't just instantly do that and pull out the money out. That's not how it works. You can bet, though, on pretty much anything. Rookie of the year, defensive rookie of the year, all sorts of things. And you can bet on the Lions and Steelers game. Yes, a preseason game is to bet. Right now, the Lions are underdogs with plus six. You can do the over-under at 37 and make some extra cash. But you just got to go to chassports.com slash Lions bet. Promo code LIONS125 to have a fun, fun way to make some cash flow. Jerry Jacobs, the Lions undrafted rookie. He was feisty, knocking down a pass in the red zone. And same with Lions Mike Ford, making sure that they cannot score a touchdown. Watching these two develop has been absolutely nice to see. Hopefully we can continue to see it throughout the rest of the NFL season. And I think Jerry Jacobs have a legitimate shot to make this roster, and Mike Ford is definitely looking like one of the positive surprise for this Lions defense. Derek Barnes continues to do well, and that's important for the Lions linebacking core. As we've seen in preseason, he was fast onto the ball, something that was vital because he was injured throughout camp as well, and with a young player, a fourth-round draft pick like himself as a linebacker, we didn't know how he's going to be, so it looks like everything is fine when it comes to that entry as he's still making some plays there. When it comes to the Lions, Jelani Tavai, he stated that he wants to do everything he can to make this Lions roster. Look, he needs to step his game up, and we've been talking about it. It's very important for him to do so. Talking about doing everything he can is great, but you got to be able to make those plays on the field, and this upcoming preseason game is going to be vital towards the success of his career as a Detroit Lions. If he continues to regress and not do what it needs to be done, he needs to be out of the initial 53, but if he can start to pick it up and understand the urgency that we need him to understand and get his head in the game, maybe he can stay on. But right now, still trending down, but hopefully he can get his stuff together in the correct fashion. When it comes to Lions offense, there's actually a lot more to talk about, which is nice. DeAndre Swift has been dealing with an injury. He did some walkthroughs and stretches. That's really important for him to do, as he hasn't really done a whole lot so far in training camp, and we didn't see him last week in preseason. He should be the main focal point of this offense. The question that I have is, can he sustain being healthy? But what do you guys think? Are you worried about his ability to stay healthy? Let me know in the comment section for Swift and his injuries. Me, personally, I'm not too worried. It's not a carry on Johnson situation as of yet, but it is something we should monitor. Quintez Cephas, back in practice, making plays, beating the defense, and that's very good. We didn't get to see him in preseason, and obviously with the lack of depth at the wide receiver position, it's important to have him in there doing his thing. Tom Kennedy continues to be impressive, catching everything his way. He is a longer shot, I would suggest, to make the roster, but he's doing everything he can to do so, and in this last training session, he showed why and how his ability can affect, and he's a guy that can catch the football, and with we've seen with the wide receivers, we're having issues there. Brashad Perryman did beat Akudu. We talked about that previously. So it's nice that he's back. It's nice that he can beat him. I think more for anything is just his consistently to hold on to the football. Can he show that he is consistent? If he can, that spells good news for the Lions offense. If he cannot, 
that is not so good. Interestingly enough, when it comes to Perryman, he was taking a lot of second team reps. And for the first team, we're talking about Tyrell Williams would be number one. And Khalif Raymond taking majority of the number two wide receiver reps. We're going to continue to see if this is an anomaly or if this is something that will continue to go forward because the assumption was, as we're talking about with Burchard Perryman, he would be the number two guy. Now, he's been dealing with an injury, so that potentially could be the situation there. But Khalif Raymond has been impressing, and he has been grabbing everything his way, and he potentially could make that jump. And same with Amon Ross St. Brown. Had another great day in training camp. Continues to be a guy who consistently gets open. Continues to make big plays. Physical. Even though he's not the biggest guy in the world. Absolutely love what's going on. So from a wide receiver standpoint, the session today was on their side. And that's good because so far in training camp, they've been more the weaker link of all the groups. And today, they were the stronger. And I love hearing that. So hopefully they can continue this route and really help this offense. Jared Goff continues to be standing in the pocket and doing those throws. He's being consistent with his accuracy, and it's showing that. We just need to get better in the red zone because they're unable to score a touchdown, and that's important for this team. We need to get touchdowns in there. We've seen that from the last couple of years that, Yes, we can move the ball. We need to be able to score touchdowns. So we'll continue to monitor this. Jared Goff's got to get a little bit better than that. Maybe he needs to get more time with the wide receivers and get on the same track. One Pride Podcast is on Thursday on my channel at 6.30 p.m. Eastern Time, a fun interactive show. If you're not a Lions fan, that's okay. Come in and ask us and myself, the panel, the questions. We will go ahead and answer them the best that we can do. So just come on, show up and we will get at it. And obviously on Saturday, we're doing the Detroit Lions versus Pittsburgh Steelers live watch party. A fun, fun time. We break down the plays here. We talk about what's going on. And you don't have any commercials. That's the best part. And if you can't, and if you're unable to watch it, come on down and listen it to yourself. We're going to have a fun time.